J. Edgar, Mood Review. An autobiography of the life and career of J. Edgar Hoover, this begins with the early days of his career in the early 1920s and takes us through basically the entire the entirety of his career ending with his demise. It chooses to focus, as many good biographies do, on one specific, well, in this case, a case, the missing Lindbergh baby, the kidnapping of Charles Lindbergh's child. I forgot the gender. There are a lot of things that make this Clint Eastwood's best directorial work in years. Among them is the fact that it is an incredibly balanced and fair depiction of the life of Hoover and his career with you know, both presenting the positives and the negatives and really leaving it up to the audience to decide. You know, we're not exactly left with, you know, a positive image of a man, but you don't walk out of the theater hating Hoover. You know, you walk out of the theater, theater understanding him and having an appreciation for what he went through in spite of not at all accepting or condoning what he did, you know, or at least many of the things that he did. There are a couple of things that could have really, you know, cost this, you know, basically broken this film. And you know, among these are notably the acting in general, but especially DiCaprio, as he really does have to carry the entire film, with you know the focus primarily being on him and the age makeup. No, really, and both are phenomenal. The age makeup, on account of the frequent jumps back and forth in time. The film basically is told as a sort of series of flashbacks to his earlier days as the as a dying, aging J. Edgar Hoover is describing it to someone writing excuse me, a basically a biography of him and, you know, his life and the FBI. And it, you know, basically we follow both of these periods of time. His earlier career and what is going on in the present, so to speak. The, again, these last days of his life and career. The these two timelines are quite effective, among other things, because cutting back and forth between them occasionally, not frequently, is used to establish things such as soon after the introduction of his secretary, Mrs. Gandhi, no, not Mahatmi, it's established by a cut to the, you know, the last days of his life, that she's still there. And I believe Mr. I'm terrible with names, Tol, Tolsty something, is actually established in 
as, as a shadow at first in the last days before we meet him in, you know, the past. So he's already established as he's, you know, he will be a part of his life in some way. The... So th these three characters, I suppose, are really the main focus, although by far the greatest amount of screen time and development is handed to Hoover. There are notable side characters, and some of them do get a lot of screen time, but again, this really is Hoover's story, and everyone else is mainly... You know, it's like, it's how they affected him and how their relationship with him was. And speaking of relationships, one aspect of Hoover's life that one, you know, there are several aspects of his life that one really cannot, you know, overlook and do his life story justice. And among them are, of course, his relationship with his mother. It shaped him in a lot of ways, and it is well explored here. Again, it's it's how balanced it is, and that you know, again, in spite of just the awful effect that this woman had on her son, you can understand her. You can see where she's coming from. And again, there is, there's quite frankly a lot to hate about her, but you don't only dislike her, you know. You actually do understand where she's coming from. There is, of course, also the, some would say ambiguous, it's really not terribly ambiguous, but his sexual orientation. And the transvestism, yeah, the cross dressing. Come in and okay, then stay out. And both are really treated quite compellingly. It, again, it's properly explored, and, you know, a scene of DiCaprio in a dress, it could so easily become silly, it could so easily have the audience laughing. I didn't hear a single person in our packed theater even giggle. That is the directorial strength of Eastwood. The film does have some humor. It's relatively sparse, but it tends to be well chosen. You know, both time and tone. The film is very well shot and well edited. It's not really, it's not flashy, but it tells the story well and keeps you interested. The choice of the Lindbergh baby disappearance was quite good as it actually almost becomes a sort of CSI kind of thing for a little while without it being, again, without it being flashy and, you know, it highlights the good that he did do for, you know, of civilization, really, the, you know, you leave the theater realizing that without this man, we might not today, or at least it would have taken longer for us to get, proper trials with actual evidence, you know, not just witness statements and other things that really, you know, aren't entirely credible. And at the same time, it doesn't entirely state that the outcome of the trial and the investigation of the Lindbergh baby was completely, 
you know, credible that it, yeah. We truly get to understand Hoover, the insecurity, the self-hatred, the jealousy, and just everything to him really comes across, and we understand his motivations and his actions. Yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it. A phenomenal film. And really everyone should watch it. One last thing is that the other historical, you know, characters, historically accurate characters, are very nicely depicted, you know, very accurately depicted. Yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.